Alright, let's try this peanut show here out. Okay, so. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> I'm half drunk. He's half drunk. I might actually get It's been a long fucking drive, people. We just covered 800 miles in like 24 hours. I have another beer in there, don't I? Yeah. I better well, go get, get more out of the truck if you need it. I better go get it. Squishy Frog, entertain the people. I'll be right back. I just unplugged my phone. I'm Facebooking and sexting right now. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care! This is some crack reporting, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I'm... We're not fucking staged here at 96.9 The Whip, as you clearly know. No. So! Okay. Got my yingling. That's a damn good beer, by the way. Okay, one more second here. Okay, I'm back. So, shock of shocks, I just watched the entirety of WWE SmackDown, and hold on to your hats, it didn't suck. What? I you're, noticed it was on sci-fi. Yeah, you're telling me that GMC, who has done nothing but bitch and moan and complain about everything about wrestling for the past... God, how many shows have I done? Thirteen? Fourteen, probably? I found something I don't hate. I know! It's shocking! Now don't get me wrong. There are things about this show that I hate it. Because not everything is perfect. But, I will say this. Uh, Smackdown, if you don't know, I believe is still taped. They film it on a Tuesday... And then they rebroadcast it Friday on, as Dog said, the Siffy channel. I refuse to call it sci-fi because when you take your sh when you take your channel that's actually called the sci-fi channel, S C I dash F I, and turn it to S Y F Y, that's not sci-fi. That's Siffy, and you will be called the Siffy channel until I deem it necessary to not call you that. I digress. So, uh, like I said, this episode of SmackDown, uh, the date, what day is the date? Uh, it's o October 18th. Yeah, 18th, you're right. The October 18th version of SmackDown was actually pretty good. Again, for many reasons. The biggest reason the two biggest reasons, for starters, uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon were nowhere to be seen. That was the plus. Number two, for SmackDown, since it's a taped show, they can go back and edit all of their promos. If you've never been to a, uh, a taping of SmackDown, I've actually been there. I've heard other people talk about this too, but um, I talked to somebody who went to a SmackDown taping in Hershey, my near my hometown, and he said that there was a there was an instance where like an opening, like somebody walking down the ramp, they didn't film it properly or something went wrong so they actually had the guy go back up to the top of the ramp and they filmed it again it was weird he said it's almost like they cut that part and they made, like, they made him start all over again it was totally weird uh, they said that interviews are heavily ed edited because people screw up on air so many times you can't do that on live TV so, when you look at SmackDown, it's actually the more polished of the shows, simply because it, it's just that, it's taped. So they can go back and they can take out any of the nitpicks that they might have. Uh, another cool thing about SmackDown is, 
since it's taped, they focus more on the wrestling. Which means they go out there, they shut the fuck up, and they wrestle. Genius concept, I know! That, that's all I've ever asked is you go out there on a wrestling show as wrestlers and what do you do, dog? What? You drink a beer. Sorry, guys. It's been a long drive. I want you to follow me on this. I want you to follow me on this. You're a wrestler on a wrestling show. There's another wrestler in the ring. What do you think you do? You wrestle him? Wrestle! Yeah! Good job! Sorry, I was kind of like off my own little world over Oh, there. shit. We forgot to do it. Huzzah! 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 Drink! Drink! Ha! Ha! Anyway. We forgot to do that on the brewery, do. Oh, well. Anyway. Tonight's episode of SmackDown. Uh, it started off with... Oh, God. Let <laughs> me get you more beer. I got more in the truck. Uh, I could probably use one more. Alright. But tonight's That's episode cool. of SmackDown started off with Vicky Guerrero, the widow of the late, great Eddie Guerrero, and I believe it was Brad Maddox. Both of these assholes are the general managers. Vicky Guerrero is the general manager of SmackDown... And Brad Maddox is the GM for Raw. Immediately, I I have controller in hand, and I'm fighting the urge to change the channel. Because if you've never seen Vicky Guerrero, or, no, if you've ever heard her, how to describe it, um... Okay, imagine if you took your cat and you shoved his ass in a blender. And then you took this yingling pint can after drinking it. You shove it in the blender with the cat. And then you take uh, razor blades, uh, thumbtacks, and... I'll say like meatloaf. Not the band. Not the not the singer, but speaking of which, they were playing in Vegas. Yeah, you you stuff all that shit in this blender and you hit puree on that son of a bitch. That's Vicky Guerrero's voice. <laughs> a cat, a tin can, razor blades, thumbtacks, and mom's meatloaf in a blender on puree. That's Vicky Guerrero. She's like, <laughs> I will have discipline. I will have order. Excuse me. I'm not doing it justice. You, if you've never heard this woman, look up a clip of Vicky Guerrero talking, and you will think that that. 10 second imitation I just did that was merciful god damn so pardon me good belt thank you so they come out and they're talking about what happened on Raw when uh, Cody Rhodes and Goldust won the tag titles from the Shield because the big show who had been fired uh, the previous week Two weeks ago. Um, all of a sudden, he just comes back. You know? He's fired. He has no job in this company. Yet, he can walk through the crowd, jump over the guardrail, and interfere in this match. It was no DQ. And I have problems with this. Because... The, the match... Originally was the Shield against Cody and Goldust. It was a tag team match 
with no disqualifications. Now, when I started watching this match, I noticed that they were tagging in and out. It's like a regular tag match. It was a no disqualification. There's a refill if you want it. Thank you. It was a no disqualification match, which meant there were no rules whatsoever. And yet, here they were tagging in and out like a normal tag team match. Okay. I just have a really small, mic small what? Smic microscopic little problem with this whole situation. Um, why? Is it called a dick tag? What? What? Why? Why are they tagging in and out of matches when it's no DQ? I don't. That 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 was probably the biggest part of the match that I didn't like was the fact that they were um, it was no DQ for Christ's sakes they didn't even start waylaying each other with chairs until the end of it but bottom line Big Show interferes we have new tag champions so uh, they come out and they say like we will not have this lawlessness anymore we will have order because that was bullshit what Big Show did so like we have security now and we we, we have them placed all over the arena Big Show will not show up here oh spoiler alert he shows up later and guess what security nowhere to be found Guess you didn't pay him hard enough, did you? So then I guess uh, Brian Danielson comes out. And he he basically is building up his uh, match with Randy Orton at Hell in a Cell. And then uh, he says, like, I have somebody in the back. And he's coming out now. And here he is. It's the Big Show. And Big Show doesn't come out because, as I said, he was fired. Which usually means you can't come back to your previous job after being fired. So he shouldn't be coming back. Spoiler alert, he comes back. So then he brings out the new tag team champions. And of course, Vicky Guerrero. That shrill fucking voice. They just, they don't, they don't hit puree anymore. They hit the speed button on that and she's like I will have order I will have them and you tonight you are gonna have a match with the shield and <laughs> she does this all I can describe it is she does like a super villain laugh she's like tonight you're gonna the shield! <laughs> no lie. No lie. She does that. She literally does a super villain laugh. It, it, it's like, like, you'll never get me, Batman! <laughs> Why is this woman on TV? Do they feel guilty that they killed Eddie Guerrero? That they have no they have to subject us to this woman? That's that's all I can think of. They feel guilty for killing her husband. So like, we're gonna give you a job. Sorry your husband died on her watch. From now on, you have a job for a life. No matter what you do, you cannot be fired. I wish I could have a job like that. But, uh... As far as the matches go... Like I said, they were really good. Uh... 
I think that the first match was The Miz and Kofi Kingston. They were against these, like, big hillbilly guys. I'd never seen them before in my life. I don't even know their name. But one of the guys wore, like, this plastic child, like, uh, sheet mask. I think these guys are supposed to be, like, from Deliverance or something. I, I don't know. I was fully expecting them to, like, stand in there in the ring with shotguns telling Miz to pull down his pants so that they could sodomize him in his ass. But this was actually an okay match, and the weird hillbilly dudes win, and they're about to attack Miz, and the old guy's like, no, no, don't do that yet, don't do that yet, and bullshit, I don't know, I didn't even have the sound of it. Um, but he was probably like, you know, like, don't you attack him, boys. He's mine. He's a pretty boy. You better drop in pants right now, boy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, then they had, uh, act, it was a women's match. It was, oh, it was Brie Bella against AJ Lee. Surprisingly, good match. Why? Because, again... AJ Lee is the only competent female women's wrestler they are allowing to wrestle anymore. And she pretty much carried the whole match. And shock of shocks, Brie Bella won. So, look for that match at Hell in a Cell. AJ Lee defending the title. and Odds are she'll probably keep it. But I don't know. Do I look like an expert on this shit? I, I'm just a fan. Nobody gives a shit about me. I'm just the asshole that sits here with a squished frog on my lap, and I expect to know what I'm talking about. But, oh, here comes the shocker. Big Show comes back. Oh, yeah. He comes right through the audience, and guess what? I didn't see a single goddamn security guard. I was going to say, that's a name you haven't heard in, like, years. Who, Big Show? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been around for a long time, but... But, I mean, you never heard him about him recently. Well, it's funny, because he walked through the crowd, and this was no more than 30 minutes ago, our general managers informed us that they had tightened security, they had posted armed guards at every gate. There was no way this man was going to get through all that. So you're telling me that this was in Kansas City. You're telling me that the Kansas City, Missouri, Police Department, Security Department, SWAT team, all that. You're telling me that they are so inept that they could not stop a 7 foot 4, 520 pound fucking ball gorilla walking through the crowd. You're telling me they could not spot this man anywhere. <laughs> because he just walks right to the ring. Nobody tries to stop him. Nobody! He gets in the ring, and he's he's like, you know, I want to thank all the people for being on my side in all this these trying times, and, you know, I'm going to make the best of it, and I'll probably be, like, a florist or, you know... What job could a uh, seven foot four guy get besides basketball player? He could probably be like a golfer or uh, a villain in Godzilla Raids Again. I, I don't know. <laughs> but suddenly, uh, all of a sudden, you hear that blender again. <laughs> Vicky Guerrero and Brad Maddox come out and they're like, You don't belong here! fire you get out you big evil giant man you get get so you have Brad Maddox who is probably 5'9 buck 50 he's in there and he's like nose to nose with or actually nose to navel with the big show and he's saying you, you better get the fuck out of here, Big Show. Like, 
You, you don't have a job here anymore. You have nothing. Get the fuck out. And Big Show looks at him and goes, you know, that's the worst thing you could have said to somebody who has nothing because now I've got nothing to lose. And he rears back and he clocks Brad Max and knocks him out of Because uh, he can't choke slam him anymore because, as we know, the choke slam is far too reminiscent of Chris Benoit, and we can't have anything involving Chris Benoit. So, he now hits people with his fist. And guess what? He just walks away. Security didn't stop him at all. Kansas City. Big Titty Committee. What? Okay, I just kind of pulled that out of my ass. Kansas City... They just made your your Bush League security people look like fucking idiots. Because nobody tried to stop Big Show. They, they couldn't even get the guy that sells popcorn to stop a Big Show. Anyway. Um, uh, the other match was, I think, CM Punk against Biggie Smalls. Oh, I'm sorry, Biggie Langston. I call him Biggie Smalls because Biggie Langston sounds stupid. Biggie Smalls sounds less stupid. But this was a good match. Uh, Punk wins, surprisingly. Then Paul Heyman comes out, and of course he's saying how I got two of the best guys here. I've got Joe Henning, who people will have to call Curtis Axel. I don't know why, and I have Ryback here. He, he, we want to call him Goldberg too, but we can't do that. And they come down, they beat up Punk, and or not? Heyman says something like, "You know, yeah, Punk, you beat that fucking scrub Biggie Smalls. Who cares? You, these guys are the real champions here. Whoever you beat up, who gives a shit?" And so they come down, they beat Punk up, and of course Biggie Smalls, he heard all that, and he of course joins Punk and beats up on. Goldberg number two and Joe Henning. So I guess Biggie Smalls is a good guy. I I don't know. Just be, yeah, okay. So he, he might be a good guy now. Big deal. He's gonna go into obscurity anyway. Doesn't matter. Uh, they had they had a tag team match with uh, the Real Americans. Yeah. Antonio Cesaro and Jack Swagger. You remember my little rant on them. Uh, they were against uh, the Usos. Uh, Jimmy and Jay Uso. Uh, Rikishi's kids. Again, great match. Why? Because they shut up and they actually wrestled. That's really my only gripe about these shows. All you have to do is just get in there and wrestle. It's not that hard. They have talented wrestlers. And of course... Uh, the, the worst part, though, was... They had... How do I describe it? Um, okay. I guess there's a tag team called Los Matadores. As in the Matadors. It's these two dudes who wear these pink face masks. And I guess they're Matadors. And what exactly is a Matador? Well, that is Spanish for bullfighter. And what would a bullfighter need? He would need a bull. So they bring out this midget. Oh, I'm sorry. Little person. They bring out this midget dressed up as a bull called El Torito. And they distract the real Americans. The Usas beat them. And that's four, <clears throat> four to five minutes of my life wasted that I will never, ever get back.
I just saw two guys in pink masks and a midget dressed as a bull beat up on two former champions, one a world champion. That was not the highlight of the night. I'll give you that much. <sighs> what else happened on this fucking show? Me getting drunk? Dog got drunk. Uh... Really? Uh... Oh, shit. See, I, I just totally... I should have been writing this down, but I wasn't. I think Alberto Del Rio came out, but I think I went into the bathroom to take a shit around that time. Cause <laughs> anytime Alberto Del Rio comes on TV, that's usually the cue for me to go take a shit. That or a Divas match. And the Divas match was actually okay. So, Del Rio is my shit break. <laughs> anytime he comes on TV... That's a very good time to go to the bathroom or make a sandwich or do laundry or wash the car or clean the litter box. Or shoot a rope. Or that. <laughs> anything, anything that you can possibly fill that time, that gap of time with, is better than listening to Alberto Del Rio. Because he's the world heavyweight champion. Whoop de shit. The world heavyweight title hasn't meant jack shit since Triple H had it. And of course, they're talking about how uh, John Cena is facing Alberto Del Rio uh, at Hell in a Cell for the world title. Again, whoop de shit. It just shows how meaningless the world heavyweight title is because a guy who has been on the injured list for how many months? Three, four months, I think, is now suddenly coming back and his very first match is a world heavyweight championship match. You might as well just take the belt, piss on it, and then throw it in the gutter because it means nothing. It means nothing. Less than fucking nothing. I remember when the world title was defended seven days a week, twice on Sundays. And guys like Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes and Harley Race and, you know, Ricky Steamboat, they all wore the world title. And you know what? They went out there and they had like hour-long matches every single night. That was when the world title meant something. And what does it mean now? It's being held by Alberto Del Rio. My shit break, man. <sighs> Enough said. So one bad shit if you had a flat screen mounted in your bathroom watching that. So, um, I guess the last match came out. Uh, Brian Danielson and, um, shit. Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust against the Shield. But first, uh, Brian Danielson comes out and Randy Orton is close behind him. And, of course, Randy Orton, the black hole of charisma. This guy could just suck the life out of a corpse. I, Randy Orton is a great athlete, but he cannot talk. There is a reason why he was put in the group with Evolution, with the Ric Flair and Triple H. Same with Batista. It's not because they were the young, hungry bucks of wrestling. It was because they could not talk. Randy Orton still cannot cut a fucking promo. He comes out and he says like, Brian Danielson at Hell in a Cell I'm gonna beat you. 
and I'm gonna prove that I'm the real WWE champion, and that I'm the real face of WWE, and I'm gonna talk like this for the rest of the time because it makes me sound tough. Err. I almost went back into the bathroom and contemplated taking another shit. I did. Uh, as far as the main event went, great match. And I very rarely say that about six-man tag team matches. This was an awesome match. Again, for the basic concept. It was telling a story. The Shield is trying to regain their dominance. They, they've been beaten down more than they ever have before. They were like the dominant team being built up in the WWE. And now they're starting to fall apart. They're starting to lose stride. And they want that back. And all three of these guys are tremendous athletes. And you had Brian Danielson, Cody Rhodes, and Goldust as their opposition. It was a great match. Um, near the end of the match, they had uh, Dean Ambrose and Brian Danielson one-on-one. -on -one. I would love to see that match as a one-on-one. -on -one. Just just those two. Like, no interference, nothing wrong. Just let them get in there and tear it up. That's all you need to do. And the ending itself actually kind of shocked me, too, because I was fully expecting Randy Orton to come out or Big Show to interfere or something to go on, but it actually ended pretty clean. Uh, they had, like, all six guys got in there and they just started tearing it up. The end came where, uh, I believe Brian Danielson nailed, uh, Ambrose with something. I forget what move it was. But then he pinned him. I mean, clean the sheet. End of match. And show ended. And I said, you know what? Sometimes the best swerve is no swerve at all. I was not expecting that. So, never let it be said that I do not like some things in wrestling. This was an okay smackdown. For everything that I just said. They shut the hell up. They just went in there. They had wrestling matches with decent wrestlers. There was very little drama. They told the stories that they needed to tell. Because, like, we're, what, nine days away from this pay-per-view. And, you know, this is the way you build a pay-per-view. Because now on Raw, you're going to have all the heels, like, come out on top. And then SmackDown leading into Hell in a Cell, all the good guys will come out on top. And they'll kind of try and balance everything out. And I don't mind that. Never let it be said that I don't think the wrestlers in the WWE are great, are not great athletes. They are. They're tremendous athletes. My biggest problem is story. The stories are fucking stupid. The build-up is stupid. Stephanie McMahon needs to find a new line of work. You know, she, I, I, I think she's still the head writer. She needs to find a new line of work because... Sometimes I sit there and I look at this shit on screen and I wonder why. And I wonder why... It, it's... I was my mind at times. I could write better. I could go and play SmackDown versus Raw story mode and come up with better uh, better storylines than this. I could just like do random pay-per-view generated matches and still they would probably come out ten times better than what Stephanie McMahon and Triple H are putting on the goddamn TV nowadays. 
But this didn't bother me. This was a good this is a good show. And I very rarely say that, especially about SmackDown, because there was a time SmackDown was very, very weak. But they've pretty much given up on brand extensions, like specific Raw and SmackDown guys, so that that can only help SmackDown. Uh I think I'll actually talk about that next time. Uh, the the brand separation. Because that was some stupid shit. I saw some positives about it, but in the end, it really was just lame. Okay, yeah. I'll talk about that next time. Next time, I'll talk about the brand separation. So, uh... Yeah. It was a good smackdown. Surprisingly. So, taping here from the Shoney's Inn, even though it's not technically a Shoney's anymore, we'll just call it the Five Guys Inn. Uh, I got Silver Tongue tomorrow. By the time you watch this, it'll be long over. So. Yeah, oh. check out the Silver Tongue vids on YouTube, by the way. Silver Tongue vids. They, they will be up, I'm sure, before this is. Yeah, on our uh, on our channel. Uh, I, got, I don't care. I got plenty of more WTF stuff. Devils in the Details, go get it if you haven't. Devils in the Details, new Great album. Disc. Check that out. Brew reviews, of course. And, of course... Hey, at least the airport customs didn't uh, get to him. That was my biggest fear, that they would see this poor little guy and think, oh, he probably oh, has... Oh, yeah, my fucking toilet broke, by the way. Yeah, he probably has drugs inside of him. I was afraid they were going to slit him open, and I probably would have cried. I'm rambling on, so I'll see you guys next time when I talk about the brand separations. Fun stuff. See you later.